Hello and welcome to Baiju's IAS. Today we are joined by a very distinguished civil servant, retired IPS officer, an eminent Indian educationist, and a brilliant author, Dr. Vikram Singh. Thank you. Sir held the post of Director General of Police of the largest state of India, that is Uttar Pradesh. Sir has also authored two books. Sir is rated as a star speaker on vital issues related to security, man management, crisis resolution, and team building. He has been a guest speaker at over 50 renowned institutes, including Lal Bahadur Shastri National Academy of Administration, Labasana, where after clearing this exam, IAS officers are trained, IIM Lucknow, Tata Institute of Social Sciences, etc., etc. As per Limka Book of Records, 2014, Dr. Vikram Singh is the most highly decorated IPS officer. Presently, Sir Dr. Singh is the Chancellor of Noida International University. Welcome to Baiju's IAS, Sir. Thank you, Dr. Jha. We are really honored and privileged to have you in this series. The privilege is mine, Dr. Jha. So, so very delighted and grateful to you to provide me this wonderful platform. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, it is often asked when students go for their interview, uh, why are you selecting IES, IPS, etc.? You, you being a very distinguished civil servant, what made you to join IPS? Dr. Jha, let me tell you and give you a frank answer to your frank question. I had everything going my way. I already was working as a lecturer in the Allahabad University because the person who did well in MSc got the job and I was already working with the Allahabad University and the pay was very good at par with IES at that time. I had no reason to opt for any other service. My home, my university and a job there, that was God sent. Now, the call of the civil services, it is good to be an academician and every profession is good. But the scope of public service and satisfaction of serving the society and the nation that is provided by the civil services is second to none. And to the contrary, if you feel self-fulfillment by way of service to the nation, service to society, and indeed, atma ke bhojan ke liye, then civil service is the option that you should always exercise. So the kind of challenges and diversified field and the kind of opportunity you get as a civil servant. Every day is a process of learning. You see, on an average, a human being meets about 80,000 people in his lifetime. But for IES and the IPS civil services, it is much, much, much more than that. Because and on average, even the junior most IPS officer, the junior most IES officer meets hundreds of persons every day. And every person has a story to tell. Every person is a universe in himself and herself. And when you address the satisfaction that you get for a lifetime, in wiping the tears of the orphan, wiping the tears of a widow, doing and dispensing with justice, the satisfaction that you get is incomparable. Sir, you were in academics, you were lecturer, then you opted for IPS, and that means you had your vision clear. You were getting at par salary, so there was nothing to uh, relinquish that job. Sir, because you have experience of both the worlds, how much academic background plays a role? Like if I'm uh, preparing for IES or civil services examination, it comes into my mind that I must be a very uh, distinction holder in academics. Then only I can or I should prepare. What is your take, sir? There was a time when academics did not have a role to play in administration. In fact, in 1950, there's a reply by the then Chief Minister Pandit Govind Vallapan to the Assembly that the basic qualifications of the British and the IP service officers was in the whole of Uttar Pradesh, there were only five graduates, the rest were senior Cambridge. Not a single postgraduate. But today, the administration has become high tech. What worked yesterday will not work today. Yesterday, you got away by cracking single examination, but the background of academics, you are a specialist in economics. I have been into environment and these two doubled up 
they can do wonders apart from the administration if in the police the crpc the ipc the juvenile justice act and in case you choose to join the ias your relevance to economics will ensure so much in the physical domain so much in the management of the treasuries the financial cleanliness of the governance therefore i would say it is always good to be qualified there was a consideration also at a point of time that phds mm -hmm. were over qualified for the police for many years i did not write prefix my name with doctor because people said people with phds are over qualified and they are in fact a burden on the department to the contrary the amount of high tech that you have now the knowledge blitz that has entered into the world of crime and criminality you have to be the basic ticket of being a good bureaucrat is to be a lifelong learner and if one is not a lifelong learner one cannot be a good administrator thank you sir thank you so very much now sir going through your lifetime experience in policing how do you see this criminalization of politics and politicization of criminals and how it is aggravating the issue of law and order a very relevant question a burning question that comes today we are in the throes of elections of very many states and the adr report says till for the first two or three decades after independence the two decades there were hardly any member of parliament who had a criminal background thereafter there were about 15% members of parliament who had criminal record right currently the adr report says and i have no means of contradicting what they have come out with that at least 30% of the members of parliament have criminal antecedents and records and most of their allegations are of heinous crime murder rape attempt to commit murder and likewise the situation in the state assembly is even worse now this evolution i would say retrogressive metamorphosis took place 20 25 years ago politicians took the help of mafias the crime syndicates to help them win the elections in booth capturings now the underworld became very smart why help when i myself can become a lawmaker why give help and be a second rate citizen therefore take the reins in your own hands and become a member of parliament yourself that was the turning point about 30 years ago when the bahubalis the mafia the crime syndicates also decided to field in their own candidates and the rest is history and you see the tragedy of the whole thing they contest from various parties they contest from behind the jails and managed to win the elections yes. unfortunately it is projected if this rate continues by the year 2050 you will have a mafia don as the prime minister and the cabinet will have 80% of hardened criminal in the cabinet i do hope there are corrective measures we have a vibrant society and i am sure i may not live to see that day of 2050 but i am sure youngsters like you have a bright future i would not like to believe that the reins of the government and the country will be handed over as churchill had predicted at one point of time in the hands of the underworld so it is affecting law and order also sir indeed it will be it is bound to affect and it is here where the civil servants come to represent the steel frame of administration and have a no nonsense approach whatever be the governance whatever who be your minister your job is as per the constitution i am not here for short term gains or losses i am here for governance clean and transparent governance it is not my job to attend any popularity contest my decisions may be unpalatable they may be unpleasant but they would be legal and moral they will stand the scrutiny of law they may be very unpopular but i am not again i said i reiterate i am not here to contest in any popularity contest so we have to uh, fulfill the dreams of the constitution irrespective of the pressures and whatever uh, tactics is applied against me obviously right. pressures come and pressures go politicians come and politicians go and there were occasions in my life when i had to tell the politicians with the greatest of respect because an administrator is supposed to be an epitome of being misright and mr right not use brazen language have appropriate tone sir governments come and governments go but the constitution of india is sacred and eternal we cannot compromise that agree thank you sir such a beautiful words for the upcoming civil servants thank you sir when we come to modern policing the legacy we have that is colonial policing so modern policing has to take precedence over colonial uh, policing and that is the need of the hour. having such a vast experience what fundamental changes would you suggest 
regarding police reforms for more effective policing. This again is as burning a question as the earlier one. Criminality into politics and politics in criminals. Right. Our Police Act dates back to 1861. And other of our statutes, you say the Epidemic Diseases Act, 1897, many of our laws they have given very good service. The 13th Criminal Law Amendment Act, which amended after the Nirbhaya case, amended the Criminal Procedure Code, the Indian Penal Code, the Evidence Act, and also we had many other amendments thereafter. But there has to be a structural reform to make the police equal to the task. The feudal mindset of the police has to go. The British had a purpose of creating a police that was feudal. Today the job is to have a police that is people's friendly, people friendly, people centric, servant of the people and to serve society, not to rule over it. Similarly, the riot drill, the demonstrators control, the non-lethal approach towards controlling of riots, they have to be, they are no longer an option, they are a compulsion. We cannot afford to kill people by disproportionate use of force. Then you come to the police station, the only technology that was known to India, maybe even till about 25 years ago, was a rudimentary crime kit box with a magnifying glass, dusting powder, and an archaic system of maybe a vehicle that ran probably more by pushing around, and a second World War vintage wireless system. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the underworld had the better of the police because this was totally unequal to the task and the challenges put before the police. Therefore, the police, if they have to be successful, will have to be a generation ahead of the underworld. And to be generation ahead of the criminals, the days of Madho Singh, Mohar Singh, Tehsildar Singh, Malkhan Singh are long over. They are long over. Today, the crime and criminality is such that perhaps if the police are not equal to the task, they will not be, have the better of the underworld. I'll give you a small example. I was inspecting a jail and one or two of the underworld were reading the Jane's Arms Journal. I would like to know from many, many IPS officers and police officers, have they ever heard or seen the Jane's Arms Journal? I just out of curiosity, say, okay, look, I will not take the names. I want to buy one of the two weapons. Should I go in for a Beretta or should I go in for a Colt? Also, the Beretta has a lesser recoil and the ejection of the empty cartridge is vertical. And then the firing pin is foolproof. And then the mechanism is more perfect because it is machine and it is made of virgin steel. This is the underworld who's telling it, talking, not an armorer, not a police officer. And if this be the level of knowledge of arms and ammunition with the underworld, well, the police officer and the IPS had better put, pull up their socks and put their best foot forward. Otherwise, any encounter with such a gangster is going to be disastrous. Therefore, not only the technology, today, yesterday, it was brawn. Today, it is brains. Today, it is IT-enabled crime, cyber crime, hacking, cracking. So many dimensions of crime have entered into the domain of crime and criminality that unless a person is able to give the better of him, the best, our best investigators in the STF and the 80s are those who can crack passwords who can hack into systems, who can go into and decipher the coded messages. It is not just that I do a degree, qualified examination. No, that is not, that is just the first stepping stone into stepping into a career. But the beginning is there to understand and go behind the eyeballs of the people behind in the underworld. What is he planning? Be futuristic in your approach. What were the crime control methods in the British area? The indigenous lie detector. And mm -hmm. I strongly condemn the use of that indigenous lighting, that is the lati. And the saying was, yes, so you leave the criminal in the police station, come tomorrow morning, he'll confess to all the crimes. By the misuse of third degree and by the misuse of the feudal impact and the feudal mindset of using third degree and getting innocent to confess. No, it doesn't work in independent India. It doesn't work because you have be accountable not only to the rule of law, to your own conscience. Your parents have not taught you to use third degree to beat up people, bash up people unnecessarily, and to have a flamboyance like a peacock. Therefore, to be technologically abreast and advanced, and to have the best practices as your second nature, that is the key to be a successful police officer or an IAS officer. So use of more and more technology, be futuristic, and do lots of reading, and always remember that you have to be an eternal learner. Absolutely. To be the basic ticket is being a lifelong learner. 
what the underworld is thinking tomorrow may think tomorrow you should have thought of it yesterday and have catered to that contingency so that you are never never taken by surprise nothing surprises you you are prepared for any contingency and give a befitting response to the underworld great thank you sir thank you sir you introduced technology for the first time in policing and you have that credit and uh, by which you solved so many heinous cases you you could prevent lots of uh, prospective crimes what what were the challenges that you faced while introducing those technologies and what were the benefits that you could demonstrate there are any number of innovations i could give you but i'll give you primarily two or three the first is electronic surveillance now it's common play that the use of our mobile phones leave certain trail i will not disclose all the trails because it will not be in public interest but there are certain trails and if you have the scientific background and you have the necessary wherewithal you are able to identify the movement the locations the conversations not just by eavesdropping because the indian telegraphs act gave you the authority to eavesdrop on the dot phones also so observing the phone calls is just one part but observing the other aspects of electronic conversation would give you so much i would not disclose that and i'll stop at that in public interest sure. that is electronic surveillance we were able to get the analyst notebook which james bond was using in most of his films in the uh, mid 90s we got the analyst notebook and analyst notebook was electronic software in which the data fed would give us the actual result and real time experience showed where the criminal is where is his movement and we could also monitor the conversation part of course with due diligence and application of the rule of law yd the indian telegraph act you can't do it just as you are a police officer and i you don't like my face you cannot put me into surveillance there is a record requirement of law that you have to seek permission that of course is a different story altogether then the jamming business you may have heard that the jail were used to spread and also control their empires of crime so the jail was used also by the use of mobile phones misuse of mobile phones there was a particular handset of the sony that was kept at the outside for the use of inmates but a handset of that sony mobile phone was such that it could have a range and it was given to the barrack by the corrupt jail staff to the crime chief and the mafia chief and he would misuse it now that mobile jammer if it is installed no mobile no telephone no electronics would be operational we got it from a sister agency very friendly we got it but that became the rule of law in fact first in uttar pradesh then in that country it is my proud privilege to have established the stf outfits in three states and then there is no looking back up stf you would be happy to know has had successful encounters in west bengal in gujarat in delhi in maharashtra and wherever the requirement was it gave a befitting reply to the indian mujahideen and in fact was instrumental in uprooting all the rudiments of the indian mujahideen all because of technology earlier in the feudal times it is said a good police officer is one who is half butcher and half human right. but that was before 47 today in india every police officer has not only to be 100% human he has to be 200% human that technology gives you the prowess that you don't have to touch anyone merely by technology you can get out and i'm seeing from first hand experience i have interrogated the toughest the toughest terrorist on the planet al qaeda indian mujahideen dukhtaran millat lashkar e tayyaba i never had to touch anyone oh. it is only through technology it was only through scientific methods of investigation that we got whatever we required and to you would be happy to know that the conviction rate is more than 90% on one hand use of third degree conviction rate is not even 30% no third degree scientific and application of mind and technology conviction rate is 90% of course it is a win win situation without touching anyone without, touching without anyone. violating any law yes. you can use that technology very true great sir thank you sir now sir usually it is said that these days lots of bureaucrats civil services uh, civil servants they are migrating to politics how do you assess this phenomenon and also if there is any such question um, uh, in actual interview which is, which has a kind of uh, uh, political uh, implications or politically loaded questions what should be the approach of an aspirant regarding civil servants migrating to politics how to assess it what is your take sir with the presumption sir 
that every field of human endeavor requires honesty, integrity, and competent people. And politics is one of them. And politics, more than any other field of endeavor, requires more honest, straightforward, and upright people. Therefore, I would welcome, I would give you two examples of my service. Asim Arun, former police commissioner of Kanpur, one of the finest IPS officers in the state, known for his integrity, and the only IPS officer to have done the commando course. Generally, the commando courses are done by the constable and sub-inspectors. He, as an IPS officer, completed the commando course with great elan, is foreign educated, yet he took VRS and chose to enter politics. Brijlal was DGP of UP after me, a gallantry medal holder also, and also joined and now is a member of the Raj Sabha. Now I would put the question, why and how? Firstly, during the course of service, please take pains and ensure that you don't give undue advantage and benefit to any political party. Everyone belongs to you and you belong to everyone and there's a level playing field of all the political parties. Even if you choose to join politics, please ensure that you owe it to yourself, to your conscience, to the constitution. Please do not favor any political party or person where you see that there is a prospective advantage and there are prospective chances of your joining their political outfit. Right. My reservation is number one. But if you have a clean slate of passion of service, you feel that you're equal to the task, by all means, every field requires. But yes, I would say a rolling stone gathers no moss. Please make a choice. Today I have offers from many political parties and I'm grateful to them. But today speaking for myself, I feel that the mindset is such, I would be a total misfit in politics. Therefore, those who have political ambitions, please see and introspect. Don't favor anyone. Don't create a space for yourself in a political party while you are in service. Be intellectually honest. And if you still have the passion that you can make a way for yourself, a wild card entry into politics and you feel you can do well, by all means, may God bless your path. Such a brilliant reply, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, joining politics as such is not bad. Mm -hmm. Why are you joining? How are you joining? That is important. That is important. Great, great. Thank you, sir. Sir, there is something related to the role of social media, particularly when we talk of uh, promoting welfare state. But at the same time, social media is creating some nuisance as well. As a police officer, what kind of challenge does it pose? particularly in the era of WhatsApp University, fake news, post-truth, uh, a message has a potential to create mass riots. In India also we have seen such things happening. How to deal with this and how to uh, regulate social media or any such regulation required? Personally, I would say a level of policing with professionalism and a no-nonsense, technologically oriented, you do not require any further laws. And I will tell you great experience. Social media, like steroids, it depends upon the application and the procedure that you are adopting it. To spread the good news and spread the governance and spread whatever is important and people have a right to know, social media is a wonderful platform and a means to spread all the good things that the government is doing. But again, there are mischief makers, not only sitting in India, but sitting in Pakistan, sitting in Bangladesh, Nepal and elsewhere, trying to spread venom and rumors doing cut, copy, paste, and he very rightly said, indulging in WhatsApp University, spreading fake news, distorted news, fictitious news. And that is where, I take you back to the year 2010, with the advent of the smartphone. Before that, you had the phones that did not only had SMS and receiving and calling facilities. Right. Then we came to the era, and that is the time you will see for the next five years, there was growth in writing, militancy all over the country, because the spread of rumors, rumor mongering and fake news was such, it was so easy to collect crowds in, before you could say Jack Robinson. It was easy to collect weapons. It was easy to forewarn the, those who are indulging in mischief. Crowdfunding became child's play and therefore the mischief was already done. We had this anti-CAA agitation. We had other agitations. We had other agitations. It was difficult to find a crowd of 2,000. But here, you had spontaneous crowd. Now, there's nothing like spontaneous. Right. There's nothing like spontaneous. There is well thought out mechanism and well calibrated roadmap to create above 50,000. But policing is all about anticipation and planning. If you can anticipate who is doing what, 
nobody operates in vacuum there is a service provider there are rumor spreaders and there are hardcore elements in a given district you name the district there are 25 people who are hardcore and every thana has five registers register badmashan crime register sampradayik gunda register sampradayik suchna register do your field work well identify those 25 and having identified whatever be the instrument in their hand whether it is social media or ak47 or rdx you be able to nail them great so the first is basic and robust field work the second is to be techno savvy and all the tools that are your at hand field work how was osama bin laden neutralized right. robust field work coupled with robust technology and if osama bin laden could be neutralized lesser mortals should not feel safe wherever they are a vibrant and a functional police force will get you wherever you are in your comfort zone right great thank you sir thank you so very much now sir regarding good governance these days a uh, flashy lifestyle of civil servants is also a matter of some uh, serious concern what is your view in making this flashy lifestyle classy particularly in police a frugal lifestyle is what a public servant is supposed to be known for an honorable lifestyle is what a public service is supposed to be known for why should i go in for status symbol i will go for status symbols when i have no status that is why i required symbols i already have a status i don't require any symbols mujhe kisi baisakhi ki zarurat nahi hai i don't have to wear a rolex to say that i am punctual i don't have to have a mobla costing 1 lakh to tell me that i can write basic english and hindi symbols are required by the weak as an upright officer with clean habits what i got was a princely amount after 36 years of service getting three gunshots for 77 lakhs of rupees okay a princely amount this coupled with the interest on this and my pension are sufficient to feed a family and look after the interest of the family if the family is frugal and upright if you have a flashy lifestyle 100 times more than this will also not be sufficient right 77 lakhs may be very good very high but tell me you must have heard of abdul karim telgi right abdul karim telgi once saw the dance of a bar girl tarannum by name and he was so happy on seeing the dance of tarannum that he gifted and threw 80 lakhs of rupees on tarannum after a dance of 2 hours then he said dr vikram singh you are absolutely stupid in 36 years you got just 77 lakhs and yet tarannum got 80 lakhs in one night well everybody has an opportunity in life to become a tarannum a panwala in lucknow nothing wrong in being a panwala he is honorable but he earns more than the chief secretary and the dgp taken together but the choice is has to make is whether you would like to be a tarannum whether you would like to have a pan shop or whether you would like to be an honorable ex dgp or an honorable ex chief secretary great great thank you sir ultimately that is your choice mm-hmm. right sir right sir mm-hmm. great sir sir now we have uh, uh, several incidents of uh, declining police public relations uh, we have seen instances of we have heard of actually instances of human rights violation at times extrajudicial killings also if there is any such question on that how to handle such questions so that i can maximize my marks i should appro- i should be appearing as tactful and because everything has a two sides and at times we only go through one side so this declining relation between police and public instances of human rights violation instances of such encounters which are often reported how to handle such questions sir let me tell you that the use of third degree and alienation with the public is because of that feudal legacy of pre-independence days in today's times we are a free country a free a vibrant democracy the people and the police should be two sides of the same coin a policeman is a citizen in uniform and a citizen is a policeman in plain clothes the experiment of community policing has done wonders all over the world and we should have experiment of community policing and the first premise i would say whenever you lose your cool are abusive or use third degree that is the surest sign that you lack training you lack manners and you are extremely unprofessional with a capital u 
it is only an unprofessional police force that uses disproportionate force in writing. And in the Thana, if there is a use of third degree, rest assured, my strong recommendation would be to suspend the entire police station that was present and was privy to the third use of third degree. We in a civilized society where there's a vibrant constitution cannot allow third degree to happen. I as replied to your earlier question said, we interrogated, questioned the most hardened terrorists on earth. We did not even have to touch anyone and with fantastic results. And look at the results of all those who have used third degree. This is a shortcut and whatever the Bollywood impact may be on Dabangam and Singham and whatnot, it doesn't work in real life. It does, just doesn't work. And wherever as IPS officers, as district magistrates, as IS or IPS officers, wherever you are, it's your prime duty to ensure that there is no third degree. To IPS officers, I would tell you that when you go from the National Police Academy, when you go to your states, go for district training, your inspector will say, you forget what you have learned at Masuri and Hyderabad. Now learn, the new Bible for you is now how to beat up people. <laughs> no, it doesn't work that way. You are supposed to be polite, you are supposed to be humane. K.F. Rustamji said, I have never slapped a person in my life ever. And he was K.F. Rustamji, one of the brightest police officers, the icons of Indian police service. If K.F. Rustamji can get his entire service, and I can tell you, it doesn't work to be brutal. It doesn't work to use third degree. My success has been by using scientific aids to investigation. And the words that you shoot should be very careful. You should be very cautious of the words because people are listening to you. Your subordinates are listening. What you do becomes fashionable in the entire police force. One police officer said, let the clock strike 11 and then I'll deal with you. When there will be no one to listen to your shrieks, when your bones will be broken, your parents will hear the cracking of the bones. It doesn't work in a free country. It doesn't work. And let me assure you, that if you indulge in this kind of illegal acts, the investigation would be flawed, the results will be flawed, there will be no conviction, and I hope you attain my age, your conscience will never forgive you. Thank you, sir. Sir, now we are expecting IES mains result, and then those selected will be called for interview, personality test by UPSC. What would be your message for such students? What kind of approach they should adopt? because such a, a distinguished civil servant you were, what would be your message to them? First is, focus on the worthy. There are too many distractions in the atmosphere now, and addiction to distraction is the death of creativity. For some time, scale down the social media. For some time, scale down the frivolous entertainment, and like Arjun, focus on the pupil and the eye of the fish, till the time your interview is over. Be relaxed and have a self-image of being extremely successful during the course of the interview. Have this image of repetition, internalization, till it becomes a habit. And like somebody asked John McEnroe before he was going to play the finals of Wimbledon, what is your statement in respect of the finals that you're going to play McEnroe? McEnroe said, now I won't speak, my racket will speak. Likewise, I expect each one of them they should not speak. Their learning and their hard work and their perspiration should speak. Great, great. Thank you, sir. So we have started this series at Baiju's uh, to help actually uh, the students because there are lots of rumors, unauthentic information they are getting from various sources. To invite the stalwarts like you to interact and to share your views on contentious topics. How do you take this uh, initiative? Dr. Jha, I'm happy you put this question. I would not have answered this myself, but now you have broached it. I'm not here to say only goody-goody things. Like in any aspect of human activity, there are the good, there are the bad, and there are the ugly. Unfortunately, this coaching, teaching, and mentoring has also become a business. No harm in being a business. But to be unethical in this is nothing better than to compound with the future of the generations. Right. There are poor students, there are extremely poor students, there are students from the BPL background, and to cheat them in this manner is, I feel, is a most despicable crime. Right. Before coming to you, I have done my homework, Sir. as it is my habit. I have no hesitation in saying that Baiju's is the best. Sir. Their team is the Thank best you, of international and world-class 
mentorship and teaching and pedagogy is ensured by Baijus. I think those students who are a part of the extended Baijus family have done a tremendous service to themselves because if you have been able to get, I am told, 240 out of all 70, 50 selections, you sir. must have done something wonderfully well, sir, sir. must have done ex extensive hard work, planning, and your reputation of holding hands and being a friend, philosopher, and guide runs right across the country and abroad. Sir. My compliments to you. Sir. And I would again say that students who have opted to hold hands with Baijus have done a great job and I compliment them for taking up the right choice. So thank you so very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so very much, sir, for this enlightening session and hope this session where you get this kind of insight by a versatile personality. Look at the person who was a uh, um, known for his uh, policing, very tough stand, always abiding by, going by the constitution of India. Now, sir, is also an eminent educationist. And sir is like, uh, uh, as I said, you, I, I told you in the beginning itself, Chancellor of Noida International University. Sir, how did you balance these uh, two requirements, which are uh, two sides, uh, you can say, black and white types? I would say that there are three things of a good administrator and a good police officer. Action flexibility. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. What was relevant for the police may not be relevant in academics, and what right. is relevant in academics will not be relevant in policing. Social sensitivity. Right. My university has students from 30 countries. And I have to be socially sensitive to what they like and what they don't like. The third being unimpeachable integrity. Integrity just does not mean not accepting money. Integrity means that intellectual honesty is more important. And in that, I must respect all communities, all faiths, all regions, all countries without fear or without favor. If I were to be partisan towards a caste or a community or a region, I think I'm intellectually dishonest. And therefore, what grounding and what good foundation the policing made, it was just a minor shift of gear in the academics because you're fully aware to social sensitivity, professional competence, unimpeachable integrity. Great. Thank you so very much, sir. Thank you. Hope, students, you would get lots of information and the way you should handle your practical actual interviews uh, while appearing in your personality test. Sir addressed so many aspects of policing, so many themes and characteristics of uh, being an ac academician and what it takes to be an upright civil servant and also without hurting anyone. Thank you so very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Thank Dr. Jha. Great you, pleasure being with you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.